Supreme Magus, Chapter 71, Change of Plans Before going to the cafeteria, can we please go to the library? I need to copy the whole book to be able to follow properly the next lessons. Solus asked. How do you plan on doing that? My Forge Master's schedule is full of theory. I doubt we will cross the alchemist again. That's why I stole a schedule from an earth-headed kid. We just need to make time so that you can give me a ride back on fort. Now I'm strong enough, surviving two hours by myself is easy as pie. In a corner of his mind, where Solus couldn't read, unless she willingly searched for it, Lit added, Wish I could say the same. On the road to the library, they shared their memories of the respective lessons. Yet Lit omitted all the parts where he suffered from loneliness and isolation. In his mind, it was a sign of weakness, something to be ashamed of. By my maker, another hot teacher, even the male professor from the alchemist class, was quite a sight for sore eyes. The girls wouldn't stop staring at his backside every time he turned around to write on the chalkboard. Do you think that it depends on their mana course or is it just a marketing move on the headmaster part? Both are possible, but I believe the latter to be more likely. Young minds are easily swayed around, especially if their hormones are properly channeled. Back on earth, my medium school music teacher was so hot that all the boys in the class learned how to play at least an instrument properly. Some even started listening classical music just to impress her. When they reached their destination and opened its double doors, the academy's library turned out to be exactly as Lid had imagined the prize hall to be, except with books instead of magical items. The bookshelves were full to the brim, forming corridors between themselves. The room was so big, that Lee suspected they had made it with dimensional magic. At the entrance, a clerk in his mid-twenties asked if he needed help. Luckily, the library had been organized well, and with the clerk's direction, Lee was soon back with the master alchemist textbooks and all the tier 4 magic books he managed to carry with him. On every shelf, there was a tag stating the use of dimensional items was prohibited, and Lit would never risk getting banned by such gold mine. I'll borrow these books, please, he said. The clerk was shocked by the amount. It was more than the average person would borrow in a whole year. Sorry, sir, the max allowed is three books at a time. Lit clicked his tongue, picking the book for Solus and a tier 4 spell book each for the war mage and battle mage specialization. He was eager to find about what spells of mass destruction look like and how to improve his battle spells. Cross-checking Lid's profile with the books of his choosing, the clerk inwardly smiled. So young and naive. He is clearly beating more than he can chew, but at his age, everyone dreams of being a genius. Back in the room, they spent all the time before dinner copying the books. They had long prepared for the mood task, bringing with them enough empty books and ink in the pocket dimension to put the Encyclopedia Britannica to shame. Solo's task was the longest one. She needed to copy every single page while Lit would just make an abridged version of each spell, copying only hand signs, accents, and a short description alongside its name. That would make possible for him to recognize those spells on site, so when facing another mage, he would have the opportunity to take the necessary countermeasures. It would also allow him to reproduce them with true magic without being discovered. At dinner, he sat once again with his fellow healers. 
As much his heart cringed at the thought of their company, he wouldn't be at the academy forever. Lit needed reliable connections in the outside world too. Besides, he had just discovered how lonely he felt without solace. He needed to get back in touch with his human side. The mood at the table, though, was gloomy. Freya kept stirring the food in her plate, just nimbling from time to time. Quilla wolfed down her food again, but there was no joy in it. She kept avoiding their gazes like she expected to be scolded any second. Lit was gripped by his inner conflict. He would have much preferred being alone with Solus, yet he needed to get a hold of his emotions, like the adult he was. Now that he had a cool head again, he had realized that even Professor Laika had been calling him mean eyes at their first meet. Solus had proven to be right all along. He couldn't keep glaring all his life. He had to make pace with his inner self. Or at least learn again how to control the emotions that showed on his face. To achieve any of that, he needed to be around people, either learning to appreciate their company or at least to fake it. Uriel had the impression that someone had died, and he was the only one kept in the dark. Freya, how was your day? He said trying to break the ice. Terrible. It's just the second day and I need help to succeed in Nalier's class and in my mage knight specialization. Don't get me started about Trask. I don't know if it felt worth scoring so few wins or his smug grin every time I lost to a commoner. Why that stupid tutor of mine didn't focus more on charm magic? I feel so stupid and insignificant. I have always considered myself as someone talented and special. Yet now, I'm just another noble that everyone makes fun of, either because of my looks or my lack of skill. I'm so tempted to give up. But I'm the first person in my family to get accepted in one of the six great academies. I cannot waste this opportunity. It's perfectly normal to feel that way, Uriel replied. I didn't fare any better today and my father is an archmage. But from Nalier's class, I learned that it's better to swallow my pride. I didn't hesitate to ask for hints during my warden specialization, since time is part of the grade. What about you, Lit? Why are you feeling so down? I heard you iced your forge master in class, gaining quite some points. You should be walking on air. Don't let yesterday bad memories ruin your day. Lit put down the silverware, trying to collect his thoughts. Being harassed is never pleasant, but I faced worse. I'm not worried about that. As for my success, I admit it it was quite pleasant. If I dismissed it saying things like it was nothing much, I'd be a lying hypocrite. But like Freya, it's my first time to being away from home, surrounded only by strangers. It helped me realize that I spent so many years hunting in the wild that I forgot how to act like a human. Be honest with me. Do I glare a lot? Every second, yes, always. The consent had been anonymous. Leet didn't trust them, so he had shared with them just a secondary issue. He was actually talking about his real worry with Solus to make his expression match his emotions. As much as it pains me to admit, I'm worried about the future. Now I have everything planned out. But what if I succeed? I have no purpose outside making me immortal. And at the end of the day, is it even worth it? Elisa had already left. Tista will soon or later marry and my parents deserve to finally have some happiness and time on their own. But where that leaves me, 
outside my family and you. I have nothing and no one that I love. I can live my life for them. Not only I would become a burden for them, but it also would aggravate my problem. Sooner or later, everyone will die and I will be left alone. What world could possibly have a world devoid of joy? Oh, Lit, you are really hopeless. Solus was really moved. He had actually put her at the same level of his family, outside the joke contents. You are just 12, yet you already worry about something that will happen decades in the future. I told you back then, and I tell you again, give this world a chance. Over time, many things can happen or change. Focus on the present. Whatever problem you'll have, we will face it together. Trying to control and predict everything is a desperate endeavor and it will eat you from the inside. My father always says that from great powers come great isolation. But don't worry, Lit. That's what friends are for, to shed the light in your darkest days. Uriel patted him on the shoulder, trying to console him. In another moment, Lit would have sneered at him, pushing his hand away. But thanks to being able of making small talks with stranger again, and mostly to Solus' words, he managed to actually relax his expression for the first time since in the academy. Thanks, Uriel, he said with a smile. Friends, huh? Then why are you consoling me and my, ma my small problem instead of Freya, that has much bigger issues? Not to mention he completely ignored Quilla. Friends, you're just trying to suck up to me. What happened to you? Quilla did ask. She followed his example, taking a pause from eating to talk easily. Honestly, this academy sucks hard. It's even worse than my village. Before becoming a healer, I was considered a burden because I was too small and weak. After learning magic, since I was much stronger than my predecessor, everyone started treating me like a monster, even as a child. I could tell they were afraid of me, of what I could have done if I wanted revenge. I always felt different and alone back home, so I decided to come to the academy, hoping to find others like me, to make friends, to have a magical family that could understand me, someone to actually trust. The more she spoke, the angrier she became. Instead, my bubble burst from day one. Everyone here pushes me around, calling me names like cockroach, skank, and after I started taking the tonic, even peak. I'm sick of tired of being afraid. In hindsight, I was better off at the village. At least they were feared and respected me. Here, I'm a laughing stock, either because I'm short ugly or because I picked only a specialization. But what could have I done? I never learned how to fight. My body can barely withstand powerful healing magic, let alone more violent kinds of magic. During Trask lesson, I lost all my fights and even if they humiliated me, he never reprimanded one of them. I hate him too. To be fair, no one had dared to humiliate anyone. Not after Lid had so easily lost points at the beginning of the exercise. Trask had let them fight fair and square. The problem lied in Quilla's short arms and flimsy build. Being unable of using any kind of silent magic except for the light one, even girls of her age could overpower her with a single hand. Using magic or a weapon was just an overkill. Lit. Guess the only one that had it easy, it's Uriel. Freya. Yeah, Mr. Archmage Hair. No one has the guts to mess with him. Kila. Lucky boy. Suddenly, 
An honest smile appeared on Lid's lips. The mood around the table suited better his taste. So full of anger, mistrust and deception. He saw potential in each one of them, especially Quilla. She resembled a young Tista that he could turn into another lead. He was the only one, aside maybe from Professor Vester, that knew that once her body developed properly, her mana core would have no limits to its growth. Cyan for sure, maybe blue if not purple. Well, Quilla, people don't need a reason to pick on you, Lid said. They need one not to. And the best reason you can give them is a guilty ballot. Think about it. I am tall for my age, talented, or at least so they say, and yet I get harassed on daily basis. If the tonic works and you start to grow, nothing will change. Remember Naliar's story. She had talent and looks, yet survived only because of the ballot. You should learn from her and not repeat her mistakes. He could see from their faces that both Quilla and Freya were seriously considering the idea of getting a ballot of their own. Lid needed a few deep breaths to find the strength to say what he needed to. As for your problems with first magic, I... He needed his sheer willpower to keep his expression relaxed instead of acting like someone that was spewing poison off his tongue. I could teach you all. We don't have lessons during the weekends. You would have plenty of space and time. The table exploded with cheers. His proposal was immediately accepted. Lit knew that respect and trust were something that had to be given before they could be given back. Uriel and Freya had both a light cyan mana core, like Nana, but theirs could still grow. Quilla had the bright green mana core despite her childish body. So for her, the sky was the limit. Even without his help, it was just a matter of time before they mastered first magic. He would exploit their desperation, giving them what they wanted before it lost its value. Just like when he helped Marchioness this star, it was the best moment to make his investment.